Hello, YouTube. My name is Will Polowski. I am currently a senior at Marquette University studying computer engineering. Uh, one of the classes I had to take for my major this year is an embedded systems course, and it's one of my favorite classes I've ever had to take. And I really like the problems and the design in embedded systems. So to kind of keep up my skills, I'm going to be starting this series on YouTube here where I just solve problems that I find interesting using the techniques I learned in embedded systems. Um, and then also use this as a way to share my learning with you on the internet. So maybe if you find something I've done interesting or if it helps you in your own projects, that's awesome. Um, and this is also just a way for me to kind of document my progress and as I grow in skills and see how I've changed um, throughout the years. Um, the first problem I'm planning on solving, I have this really old coffee pot here. It is just a switch. Um, there's nothing in the ways of electronics inside of it, um, and I drink a lot of coffee. I don't get by in the morning without my two-thirds of a coffee pot, and I hate having to brew it in the morning. Um, I don't like getting up and putting on all my coffee grounds, pouring in the water. Um, it's just a lot of work. I don't like it. I'm lazy. Um, so my first goal would be to use um, or create an embedded system that allows me to program this coffee pot from my phone and then also control it in that way because I've also had a lot of times where I've forgotten to turn it off after a couple hours and my coffee becomes burnt. So that's the goal. So what's some of the hardware I'm planning on using to solve this problem I've created for myself? Well, to start, I'm going, this is the microcontroller I'm gonna use. It is the STM32L0. It's the board I use for my embedded systems course and it's designed for the Internet of Things sphere which means it is working well in low power devices. And that was something I never really got touched on in my embedded systems course. So I'm gonna to try to implement some of those features on this board and use this project as a learning experience for that as well. Hopefully later on, I'll be able to test this with like a battery and see how long I can get it to last there. Um, if you're looking to buy a microcontroller, I do recommend this one. However, it only has eight kilobytes of RAM. So just be careful if you think you're gonna use a lot of memory um, this one can sometimes bite you in the butt for that. Um, also, it's only $13, so it's pretty cheap and inexpensive to get started with, and it has a lot of good peripherals on it as well. To interface with the device wirelessly, I'm going to use the HC06 Bluetooth module. This one's also super cheap. You can get it for like $9 on Amazon, and then it also just uses a UART connection to talk to whatever computer you want. So, if you don't want to use STM microcontrollers, that's totally fine. You can probably port this project to almost any device microcontroller out there. It's super basic. Um, so now I'm going to go write some simple code to just start a timer and then keep track of time. And then when I'm done with like a proof of concept, I will show you guys that before I get into building the final prototype. So jump to that. Okay, so I've just finished some basic preliminary testing, and what I have before me is my prototype of my prototype. It's basically just to verify that my design is actually going to work. I've got my microcontroller hooked up to my Bluetooth module via UART as planned, and then I'm using this LED right here to simulate what turning on and off my coffee pot's going to look like. Right now, the Bluetooth module can read in some very basic data and then start a timer. And then, once the timer is up, it'll trigger a GPIO pin, which will turn on this LED. The current plan for turning on and off my coffee pot is to use a programmable extension cord, which also just takes a GPIO pin. So in the final prototype, all I have to do is swap this LED out for my extension cord and everything should still work as planned. I just finished testing for about an hour and 15 minutes, where there was an hour and 15 minute timer programmed on my board. And as you can see there, there was a little bit of error but I think this error is acceptable because this design is supposed to work with long periods of time, so I don't mind a minute or two of error if things need to go for a while. And then as you can see just there, the LED just turned off, and this is because I've also got a timer that starts right as the first timer ends, so that it will turn off my coffee pot, or in this case an LED, after a specified amount of time. So overall, I consider this a very big success, and I'm going to go on to making my actual prototype now. Okay, it's been a few hours since I finished up the first proof of concept using the microcontroller here, and I've now got it hooked up. This is my programmable extension cord. I've got my coffee pot hooked up here to one of the normally off 
switches, and then my microcontroller is being powered by the always on port. Um, the GPIO pin is right here. This bottom one is ground, this top one is the input, and that just hooks directly back to where I had the LED from my proof of concept. So the LED and the switch here will trigger both at the same time, and then my coffee pot has been filled with grounds and water. So hopefully at 6.15 in the morning, this will go off and I will have coffee. All right, it's the morning now. Looks like the device worked pretty well throughout the night. Uh, it did trickle a couple, couple minutes earlier because it was set for 6.15, but it looks like it's already about a third of the way done here. Overall though, I'm still happy with it. And the coffee will be very much appreciated this morning. All right, so now that the prototype is actually done, it's time for me to talk about how I actually developed my prototype and a lot of the concepts behind it. This is where we get into the really technical mumbo jumbo. But to start out, I've just got a block diagram detailing the high level of how components are interfacing with each other. It's pretty straightforward, as you can see, there's not a lot to it. It's just my phone, which sends data via Bluetooth, which is picked up by the Bluetooth module. The Bluetooth module sends that data to my microcontroller via the UART1 peripheral. This is how the user interface was programmed, and everything is done to communicate via this UART1 peripheral. The UART1 peripheral will send that data to initialize a low power timer, which is used to actually track how much time has passed since the user requested a timer. Because one of the goals for this project was to make sure it's as low power as possible, this low power timer works pretty great, uh, and it's pretty easy to use as well. Then there's just the GPIO pin, which is used to interface with the actual programmable extension cord. And then I'm also using another UART peripheral to interface with my laptop and send some extra debugging information if I need it. As you can see, the design is super simple and straightforward, so you can really implement this on almost any computer or Arduino out there. Uh, there's not much you need on your actual microcontroller, just a couple of UARTs, GPIO, and then a timer. Once you've got that, you can really implement this on anything. All right, so before getting into some of the code details, I wanted to quickly talk about how I use the CubeMX tool to generate a lot of the code for the peripherals around my device. Right here, we can see the pinout of my device, and you'll notice there are some pins specified for the LCD that I showed in my uh, proof of concept, and that's not actually used in this design, but the pins were just carried over from a previous project. The big ones to focus on are the UART ones. These two are for communicating with my computer, and it is the UART2 peripheral. Baud rate is set at 115200 because that's what I like for my computer. The UART1 peripheral is used to communicate with the Bluetooth module, which by default has a baud rate of 9600. This can be changed to be whatever you'd like, um, but more on that later. Also, I did enable the interrupt for this because it's how I'm going to actually wake up my device when it goes to sleep. So the interrupt needs to be enabled for that. And finally, there's also the low power timer that I used. Uh, I didn't modify any of the settings in here because I prefer to modify my timers in the code portion. But before hopping to that, I'm going to quickly show my clock configuration for my device. Because I was focused on making a low power device, I wanted to have the clock frequency as low as possible. So I used the MSI clock, which gives me an output clock of about 37 kilohertz. This might be why there was some error in how accurately my device is tracking time, but again, I think I'm pretty happy with this clock configuration, so feel free to copy it or study this. And then really quickly, before I jump into the main code, I want to talk about how I set up the low power timer. This was all generated by STM and I didn't really change this. The biggest thing to note is for the frequency of your time, or how often your clock is going to trigger. This is the function you have to call and make sure to start your timer in an interrupt mode. The frequency for it here, I'll try to put it up on screen in a bit better as well, but essentially it's just a function of the prescaler and whatever value you give it here. So currently with this 46,249, it gives me a frequency of 0.2 Hertz or every five seconds. Next, I figured I'd just include a quick section about some of my code design. The code will be uh, linked in the description to my GitHub. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I figured I'd just go over it pretty quickly. At the core of it, I just developed this pretty simple timer class. All it really does is 
just keep track of the current time, how much time has passed since the user initialized it, and then just go to a certain spot in memory when that time has passed. So here's the .h file. As you can see in both of the constructors, it's required that you pass the method that will execute. Um, and then there's also just a couple methods to change those and then get some of those variables back for the user to view. So as I mentioned, every time the timer is incremented, it just checks if the all allocated amount of time has passed. If so, it jumps to the execute method and does whatever needs to be done. Uh, also, it's important to note that this timer only works in seconds. Uh, so if you want to interface with how many hours or minutes are left in your timer, you will have to convert that after you call the get time left method. As far as the main code goes, uh, all that's really done is basically putting the device to sleep. STM provides this really nice method that allows you to put the device to sleep, and whenever an interrupt is received, it'll wake up, and when that interrupt service routine is done, it goes back to sleep. So to start this process, I just signal that I want to receive one byte, which is how the user wakes up the device, and then starts setting up timers or reading data. So all of this code is down here, where the callback method right here will just print the options as soon as it receives a byte, and then wait for the user to send some more data, and then you know call the respective method. There's really not too this much or not much to this, just as I mentioned here, there's the translate time because it only returns in seconds. And then initially the timer's set to turn on the coffee pot, which is here. And then when this timer is up, this method's called, it turns on the GPIO for my programmable uh, extension cord. And then it also sets up a new timer here and then prints out for how much longer and updates where it'll return to. There's nothing really in this one, it just retoggles the pin. And yeah, that's the code. So for the last technical section, I just wanted to talk a bit more in depth about how you can interface with the Bluetooth module, since if you're looking to add this in your own device, this is probably the most important section, and it's probably why you're here. So with the serial app I used, there was definitely some awkwardness with trying to read data from this Bluetooth module. So just be careful about which app you're using and how it's sending data. For me, when I wake up my coffee pot or my microcontroller by sending just a single character, I have to receive three bytes from my Bluetooth module. And this is because uh, the device always ends with a new line and then a carriage return. So even though I'm only looking like it's sending one byte, it's actually sending three. And if I didn't receive all three of those bytes, my entire device would just freeze up and it wouldn't know what to do with, it, with itself after that. So, again, to just start this process, when the device goes to sleep, it waits for three bytes or a single character. After this, if I choose to set up my a new timer and then prompt the user for how long, how many hours, how many minutes they want to wait, I do use Scanf. If you're using the Cube IDE software um, and an STM microcontroller, uh, there are a couple include files, the retarget.h and retarget.c. These enable to, you to use scanf and printf throughout your code. I highly recommend it over using that how you are to receive and how you are to transmit. This is much clean, cleaner. However, this does give you less control over how many bytes you're receiving from your data. So when I scan in a integer, as in right here, it won't receive that carriage return and the new line. So after I've received in my integers, I have to call this receive Bluetooth data function, which just uses scanf to just receive as many characters as I've specified. And so after I've read in both integers, I use this to clear up the carriage return and the new line so that when the user sends more data, the microcontroller won't pick up that extra carriage return um, junk and then I'm good to just use the device as normal. The Bluetooth module also has a default baud rate of 9,600, uh, but this can be changed via add commands. It's pretty simple. Um, I don't use that at all here. I've left it with the base 9,600 because that's all my device needed. 
but I will link a data sheet in the description so you can find the different at commands if you want to increase the baud rate, change the name of your device, or add a password to it. Those are all things you can do, which is pretty neat. All right, thanks for making it this far in the video. This is the conclusion. I'm pretty happy with how the prototype turned out. The cup of coffee this morning was excellent, so not much to complain about there. Um, if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. You made it for all the technical mumbo jumbo. I appreciate it. Hopefully you found something in it interesting or helpful. And if it inspired you to make your own embedded device like this, that's awesome. Uh, all the components I used in this video are gonna be linked in the description, um, as well as the link to my GitHub and some documentation. So everything that I talked about in this video should be somewhere in the description. Next steps in this project for me, um, because I have to return my microcontroller pretty soon, uh, I think I'm gonna go to an app development side uh, because interfacing with the Bluetooth module via the serial app was a bit awkward, uh, I really want to have control over both ends of the communication. So I think an app is really going to let me do that, and I'm not used to app development, or um, I haven't done any. So because this project is also about me learning, I think this is a great opportunity as well. And I think it'll be kind of fun. Um, some other stretch goals further down the line is to transfer the big mess of a thing that I had next to my coffee pot into a smaller device that's much more condensed and um, doesn't take up a fourth of my kitchen table, and then hopefully later on transfer that to a PCB so that it can hopefully, fingers crossed if I can design it well enough, fit just in the side of my coffee pot so there's hardly any overhead at all, but that's super far down the line and I'm not used to PCB design at all. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully I can continue this and have time, but I am going into finals and Christmas break is coming up. So we'll see what I can find time for. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.